Greetings, sisters. Dear coming Repro Technological Tribe, I am not Johannes Paul Reiter today. I am Transformella. I am the queen of debris, surrogate mother of potentiality, and I am the first repro technological revolutionary of the OVLU factories. I work here as a ridiculous trickster in what you might call this reality, or what you might call our reality. But I declare that in what you perceive as common reality, there is something else. There is a potential. And I evolve, I crystallize, I derive from this very potential, which I call potential reality. Potentiality. So in this common reality, we are in a museum, we are in a conference, but activated through my presence, I hope to precipitate another real. And this is why I'm here as well, parallel, excavating this very potential from our common reality. So I'm here to give you a foundation so we can excavate potential together. And excavating, redeeming the real, the potential in this reality, this is what we are going to do tonight. But we need a base, a foundation to do this together, to work together, and to become excavators of another real. To build this foundation, I will use three narratives. The one is an introduction into our constructed framework, into our engineered genealogy. The second narrative is the history of my sisters and my companion species that I've brought with me. And the third one is an account of my own becoming Transformella and my work in what I call the Reprovolution. Reprovolution. I hope this is going to work. So I'm going to start with our framework, with the meta structure of our existence, of mine, of my sisters, and our companion species. This is the framework, and I'm going to zoom into that. Can we see this? Yes. So this is identitecture. And if you follow identitecture, there's different families, and there's different genus, and what you don't see in the picture is our species. I am a potential identity, and I have three other companions, which is Protector Rayamae and the Wesenschwan. In potentiality, we call the order of things and beings identitecture. Identitecture was, until now, our constructed and continuously evolving genealogical tree of an experimentally and techno-organically sprawling herd. I'm going to show you that sprawling. It's 
sprawls along. And everything you see It's too slippery. Everything you see there is one appearance of one of our potential identities. When we go to the cave of reproductive futures upstairs, you can see this diagram of identitecture printed out in its totality and you can immerse yourself into the sprawling of our techno-organically constructed herd. So this diagram framed our names, our appearances and crystallizations, assignments and sites, methods, and it is still the diagram of our reality construction. But right now, today, this, dry, this diagram is becoming obsolete because we are forking. We are partitioning, we are reproducing ourselves, we are manufacturing us yet another identity. So today, family becomes order, species becomes genus, and um, I'm not seeing it at the moment, but everything moves up one class, one category. This is my younger and magical sister, Protectorama. Protectorama manifested as a spiritual materialist, a world healing witch. She seemed like a paradox at first, but the assemblage of the material and the spiritual became the core of her teaching and is until today the kinetic energy that propels her lectures when she holds her teaching organization with the name Neo Akara of Materialist Spiritology. The basic theoretical assumption of her work as a witch is and was, was and is, I mean, I'm always going to skip between past and present today because we are in the present, but actually we are moving into the future of the new identitecture in forking. So it was it was the possibility of world healing through de-rationalization and sensual communeering. And according to this assumption, she was determined to develop a specific, actualized, and technologically informed spirituality. <coughs> Can you see this image? Can we take out some lights, or is that or write like this. Okay. The engineered community machine the witch constructed, the world healing forest functioned as her dysprothetic ritual site in which Protectorama preached through smartphone candy fetishes while the community was suspended in a steely prosthetic device. This is the device. Because in the witch's thinking, our existence is prosthetic in and for itself. We lead the life of accessories. Accessories not of another being, but as an appendix of a self-propelling and self-eternalizing circulation in which all sentient and non-sentient entities are subjected to the domination of abstracted principles which we invoke as money, markets and surplus value. And according to Protectorama, your smartphones are not your prothesis but you have become the prothesis of your phone. Or, let's put it this way, you have become the fleshy prothesis of your own political economy, which is materialized in the smartphone. The result is 
a non-sovereignty or even anti-sovereignty as we have become objects among objects. You are ridden by the horsemen of capital, similar to the Loire, the lords of death and love and desire, riding the believer in Vudun. This is what Protectorama, the world healing witch, calls capitalogenic possession. We do not run things. Things run us, sounds from the psycho-realist, technomagical world healing forest, when the counterspell of the world healing witch initiates our body's reuptake of this endo-capitological prothesis. Following the construction, though, of the ritual, Protectorama forked for the first time. She started to appear in multiple locations, and the neo akara mutated from being confined to the black box of Western European culture to form a more planetary uh, practice of congregating materialist spiritologists. So the world healing witch forked herself into the first embodiment of a coming community of worldwide witches. She became a hungan and worked as a smartphone zangoma, <laughs> aka a South African muti healer, performing, performing the very dysprosthetic ritual dances in Maboneng, in Johannesburg, for example, as you see here. the ritual dance. She hiked and preached as a 3G mountaineering witch, and I'm going to show you some images of that. That's her hiking and preaching on the uh, lands of, I don't know what we call this in common reality right now, I forgot where it is exactly. But in potential reality, the geopathology of capital, uh, I will come to that later, is anyway putting a huge stress on the local in itself. And so I'm not going to go into these names of local sites. So after holding a light-omitting processorama in the Cathedral of Screens on Times Square in New York City, she set out to another hike that is fundamental to the understanding of what happens tonight upstairs in the Cave of Reproductive Futures. First, a little bit more of the Cathedral of Screens in New York City, probably a lot of people have there have been there in common reality. We excavated potential from also this very site almost a year ago. And this is the hike she took on just recently. And it's very fundamental, as I said already, to what we are going to do tonight. With a group of sisters and comrades, and I heard that some of them wanted to come, but I can't see any. Yeah, 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 I can see someone. Yes, welcome. Uh, with a group of sisters and comrades, um, and some of them are here, <laughs> um, Protectorama went to the mountain top of Riedbergjoch, a site, a local place, to produce herself a new version of herself, a new witch made by the old witch, a new line of life within identitecture, forking off the existing string of appearances in the real. 
The future was, this future being was produced, or at least anticipated, collectively by a collection of individual forget, forgotten data and its material manifestations in USB drives, in this very situation, in this um, ritualistic stand that we carried up there. Um, and everyone, everyone present gave their USB individuality to melt into what we, the potential identities um, in identity architecture, call the communizat. Or in English, you would probably say communizate. Communizate, I can still say that. I like communizat also better somehow. That might have something to do with my language. So the communizate or communizat is the material imprint of a communal gathering. Mm. Very important for what we do today. This is a communisate, a communisat. So the communisat is a crystallization of, of a material core or precipitation of a social process, and it is closely linked to communeering, which I used before in this lecture but haven't explained properly. It's also a protectoramian term as much as communeering, its terms made up by the witch to describe her own identitarian um, practice. So, a communizat and communeering, taking it from the witch's thinking, we could describe communeering as an actualization of social re-engineering in which uh, the common or normal or prevalent social relations are questioned and the potential of another sociality is excavated similar to the potential. In this very present in which humans as a species gain control over their own evolution, and I will come to this later, to actively, practically and experimentally participate in the reconstruction of the human in and for itself, and not to leave the field to omnipresent corporations, cyber authoritarian government becomes a political necessity, but we don't have a body for it. So as long as we do not have an incorporation of neither the desire nor the necessity, we need to start reconstruction with our very own means. And obviously these means are not merely technological, who would think that? These means are not endowed with the necessary capital. Uh, Rosie just put that out very um, prominently, they are neither authorized nor legitimated by a state. These means are, for the first instant, psychoactive. They are imaginative. They are sensual. They are positively and, positive and possibly irrational. But it is them, these means, our means, specifically that can become a somatic and a form of a body in the future. So you can see the communisate, the communisat, as a precipitation of the present social psychic potential, a counter fetish or a future body, if you want. So the ritualistically melted USB communizate or communizat will grow with the witch's future appearances. It is a totipotential artifact that will eventually give birth to a new witch, a new constructed species and thereby family, genus and order. In identity architecture, everything is and everyone is connected, interlinked, dependent on one another. If one of us evolves, we all change. We develop cyclical in cycles, in appearing and reappearing, reappearing indifference, alterations of ourselves lead to new practices, new moves, new peer groups, new companions, to new sites. We develop specific means to research, to learn, to work, to teach, to travel, and to preach. And this is Schwarmwesen, another one of us. 
I do not want to go too much into detailing its work and becoming, but it is important that you get to know it because its function in identity architecture is non-essential, not one-dimensional, like me, with a fixed identity. They are a potential identity in the form of a swarm, meaning their relation of their individual existence to the collective is entirely collapsed. They are not one bodied, rather a heap. A heap of multiplex body particles, and these body particles are being shipped around the planet. Largely unconsciously, in a gigantic techno social machine that you might know in your reality, in this reality, know by the name of tourism. The Schwarmwesen has crystallized there, in this machine, largely unaware of its existence, its mission and its language, meaning not the ability to speak grammatically correct, its languishlessness, also the disorientation about its own, about its own appearance in a specific context, is not a semiotic lack, but a socio-political one. It is the Schwarmwesen that lacks knowledge, context, aim, community, as well as discourse. It's completely disoriented and has no grammar of beingness, you could say. It's def a deficient identity and born or crystallized as a deficient identity. And the swarm itself frames this mode of existence along three main deficiencies. One is geopathology, the sweet poisonous desire to be and remain anywhere specific in this translocal hypercirculation of human bodies. The second one is chronostrophy. The, catastro the catastrophic dysfunctioning of what the Schwarmwesen calls body time, and that dysfunction inflicted by that very circulation that it's been torn into, thrown. And capitalotrophic addiction, the threat of a metabolic dysfunction if you step, or it, or all of us, step out of capitalist time and space consumption. Without going too deep into these three concepts theorized by Schwarmwesen, I would like to fade out of the Schwarm and into my own history, my own tale of becoming. Let me tell you the tale of Transformella. As the queen of debris, I was crystallized in white teaching caves. At that time, I was working to develop the words and contents of my Repro Communo Manifesto. My psychorealist research until now, then, was dedicated, am I this, doing something? No. So I'm starting again what my psychorealist research was. My psychorealist research at that time and until now was dedicated to the processes in which biodigital capitalism transforms the way we reproduce things, beings, and ourselves. My focus herein was the way new global communication networks interlace with the biotechnological innovations such as in vitro fertilization, cryo cryotechnologies, and surrogacy. And another one. So I worked on these 
different biotechnologies, how they interlace with information and how they merge further with what we all, you saw it in Schramwesen, call a planetary body circulation, mainly by the modern or rather late modern technologies such as the jet plane. And this triangulation, you might call it, um, was the moment when I began to research all these technologies intertwined, how they started to form an entirely new set of global technosocial relations in the way humans produce and reproduce humanity. The contemporary moment in which human procreation is being industrialized on a global scale can't be understood and therefore not criticized by historical materialist terms anymore. The contradictions of bioethics in international lawmaking rest in the fact that not only we as bodies, as heaps of cells, of differentiated cells, of grown-up cells, but also our isolated toti potential, our stem cells, started to migrate across borders and continents in cryo-containers, suspending space and time of reproductive events according to demand and supply. In all of this, I was concentrated mainly on reframing concepts of labor, production and reproduction, as, and the class relations they entail. Because ultimately, all of these organic materials, the human cell heap as much as the nitrogenic stem cells, have mutated into commodities circulating what I have called an emerging utero-capitalist political economy. There is a new mother on the forking horizon of humanity, a technological mother, drunk with desires, hyper-cold and at the same time breeding, a machinic and hormone-hatching networked mother, and I've called her meta-mother, and she rises in what we still call the East against the northwestern archetypes of father fordist and worker man. She is the new reproductive arcana in the midst of a biodigital trans mutation in the midst of what I call reproduction revolution or reprovolution, reprovolution. So I left the white caves. I had to leave the white caves and find Meta Mother. And I searched where I suspected the emerging reproductive colonies would bloom the most violently. I went to see the surrogacy centers in India. It was there where I found a global elite of repo-technological early adopters, internet users, and economy class fertility tourists get their babies produced by poor Indian women. And I met Naina Patel. This is not Naina Patel, this is me in the reproductive colonies called India. And washing myself in the Ganges. This is Naina Patel, the Meta Mother, what I call Meta Mother. I also call her the first utero surrogacy capitalist on the emerging global fertility market. And I found her immersed in a machine mothering triangulation that I would like to show you, but I'm thinking I'm running a bit out of time, so I'm not gonna show a video. Even though it's just really short, it will take too much time. But what's interesting is that triangulation that I also sketched out already of the hatching machine that is the reproductive worker the client, the fertility tourists, giving their genetic material, mostly white genetic material, and the meta mother, Naina Patel, and the machines that they are connected by. The video is coming, huh? So back in the White Caves, I looked at reproductive enclosures and I conjured up my own transformalian terminology. I translated a lot of terms, I went into the theoretically slippery terrain of muta mutating terms, conjuring up 
social reproductivity, utero sourcing, all of that. And my journey along techno-sexological progress entered into the realm of perfection. And I went along perfection, perfecting perfection into these dystopian continents of new genics, of technogenics, of liberal eugenics, a huge process in which I met Lee Silver, and then went on to go to the white genetic material source of the coming metropolis of the white genetic materials, in all in search of the meta mother's um, antidote, in a way. It was very clear to me, or I had already forked into Transformella Avatara in the search of this global meta mother, but now it became very clear to me that I needed to construct a hostile tribe, not only against these utero capitalist cell circulation services, but more importantly against the impending update, this reprogenetic biologicalization of modernist industrial class relations. A tribe against the corporate colonization of reproductive rights, against a globalized reproductive industries capitalizing on economic segregation, pointing towards a future in which genetically modified classes of humans techno-evolve into an economically distinct species. Yet I still had a completely different idea what was to be done against the techno-enthusiast eugenic desires embedded in this sexualized cryo-hormone commodities. Instead of relying on the state to ban and manage the emerging repro industrial complex, I worked on a manifesto suggesting to appropriate the sexological machinery for our means. So I announced the again and again repro communalists, the repro revolutionary avant garde as a repro communal tribe. I became the propaganda avatar of my own coming repro technological tribe. And you see me in this function um, in one of the factories of care work preaching to the coming repro communal tribe, preaching on street corners in the metrop metropolis of white genetic supremacy. And constantly developing this notion of the coming repro-technological tribe. Let's organize reproduction on a societal level again, I said in this manifesto. Let's use the techno-sexologic machines for an again and again attack on the nuclear family concept. We want to procreate outside and parallel to romantic relationships, yes. We want to construct sexual, multisexual, multigendered, and technologically assisted parenting groups with three, five, or more individuals, just as the capitalist reprogenetics are suggesting. But we want to do it with uh, individuals outside of romantic relationships, outside of genetic kinship, outside and inside various cultures, backgrounds, milieus, and social strata. We shall invent repro-communal tribes and couple our vast social and political imagination with the accelerating biotechnological progress. Who said that did, that did, wouldn't work? Transformella propagates techno-progressive communeering. Yes, prepare to become a repro-communal mother of a techno-reproductive, futuristic repro-communada. So I ask you all to join my repro-communal reprovolution. And I had these reactions <laughs> most of the time um, and that I didn't find this repro-communal tribe right away and that people weren't screaming about it because the contradictions of this tribe are apparent and we've heard them before. So I was starting to ask myself, what is this we actually? And what does that actually mean to appropriate a bioscientific capitalist machinery? I am in the impression that this is not going to be answered by theory. 
For me, as a researcher, even as a psychorealist one, these doubts signal the imaginary, that the imaginary potential, the theoretical potential of the repro communal tribe might be excavated already in my previous work. So mining for a theory of the repro tribe has to come to an end. I do need to fork as well. I need to partition myself in the same way Protectorama needed to partition herself and recreate herself. I need to create a new version of myself and I am giving birth to myself today. Transformella needs to evolve and I need you, my sisters, possibly comrades, the community that has gathered today, this communal gathering, to help me and to support me. Because no identity texture and no forking and no identity production can work without any community. So I have to fork maybe into a more vicious mother, into a more fierce avatar, I don't know, maybe into an intervener more, into a practitioner, into a keen mother, into a fierce Kali collective reproducer. I don't know what it's going to be, but tonight we will find out together. At least we will anticipate what it is going to be, and I hope you will join me then. Thank you. <laughs>